are so excited for our fourth graders to share with you all that they have learned about Florida studies. So right now I would like to introduce Ms. Lester, who's been their teacher for Florida studies for our fourth graders. Let's give Ms. Lester a
by an arrow. His ships quickly sailed back to Cuba, where Ponce died of his wounds. Stories of Ponce de Leon's adventures lured other Spanish explorers to come to Florida. In 1527, Campillo de Narvaez sailed from Spain to start a colony. Narvaez landed in our own backyard at what is currently known as the Jungle Prada site in St. Petersburg. Upon meeting the natives, he demanded to know, Where's the gold? The Indians, wanting to, him to leave, decided to trick him. Wandering for months, and suffering from starvation, desertion, and Indian attacks, Narvaez and his remaining crew built makeshift rafts hoping to set sail to a Spanish colony in Mexico. Narvaez was never seen again. I should write about this. <laughs> One lucky survivor of the failed Narvaez expedition, Oliver Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, wrote an account of his experiences and kept detailed notes of the many American Indian tribes he encountered. Upon his return to Spain, de Vaca published La Relacion, the narratives of his expedition. Another explorer that was influenced by the achievements of the Spanish before him, Fernando de Soto, set sail for Florida in 1539. I brought with me men, horses, pigs, and supplies, but also infectious diseases such as smallpox and measles. On his march north in search of gold and riches, the Soto was instrumental in contributing to the development of hostile relationships between many Native American tribes and Europeans. Although he never found the riches in Florida he had found in South America, de Soto was the first European to discover the Mississippi River. By 1561, the Spanish had not found the riches they sought in Florida and had failed to build a single colony. That year, the King of Spain declared, Spain is no longer interested in Florida. <laughs> Spain was not the only country interested in exploring North America. In 1562, a Frenchman by the name of Roll landed on a small island on the St. John's River, erected a marker with a bronze shield, and claimed Florida. The French group received a friendly welcome from the Tamuqua, with whom they traded. Ribot turned his fleet north and sailed up the coast to South Carolina, where he founded. Ribot, however, soon set sail for France to secure supplies for the small settlement. René Lavenier. In 1564, I, René Lavenier, who sailed to Florida with Rago two years earlier and colonized to present-day Jacksonville to build Fort Carolina. The artist, John Lemoyne, was one of the settlers of Fort Carolina. Lemoyne traveled through North Florida, charting the coastline and the lives of the Tumuqua Indians. His engravings gave a detailed account of the early Native American way of life. While the life at Fort Caroline flourished at first, problems soon arose. The Tumuqua became tired of supplying the colonists with food. Many colonists were more interested in seeking gold and silver than farming, and the colony soon attracted the attention of the Spanish. The Spanish decided this French fort was much too close to their treasure route, and a stage was set for battle. Rabot, who had been spending some time as a prisoner in the Tower of London, was quickly bonded and sent to Florida to protect Fort Caroline and relieve Guadagnier of his governorship. The Spanish, not to be outdone, set their own axe con Pedro Menendez de Aviles to attack Fort Caroline and drive out the French. Upon arrival, however, Menendez found the mouth of the St. John's River blockaded by Rabot's ships. Menendez turned his fleet south and sailed into a protected harbor. Rabot decided to give chase, 
but many of his ships were destroyed by a massive storm. Menendez marched his troops north and led a surprise attack on Fort Caravan. Vladimir and Lemoyne escaped. Rabot, however, was sentenced to death. <laughs> Menendez and St. Augustine became the first permanent European settlement in North America. Despite Menendez's efforts, St. Augustine struggled. The settlement suffered from disease, desertion, Indian attacks, and threats from other nations. A British explorer and privateer, Sir Francis Street, or as some would call him, a pirate, began attacking the treasure fleet and coastal settlements of Spain. In 1586, he raided St. Augustine and issued the dreadful orders. Over the next 80 years, the Spanish settlement suffered pirate attacks, hurricanes, floods, and another fire. But each time, the settlers rebuilt their homes and wooden fort. In 1672, the Spanish decided to build a sturdier fort. The Castillo de San Marcos took 20 years to build. Built out of coquina stone, the fort withstood two more British attacks. Due to the success of Spanish colonialism in Florida, Spain sent missionaries to convert what they thought were the native savages. During this time, some Native Americans adopted the European way of life. However, many were forced to accept it. Many of the workers who helped build the Castillo de San Marcos were escaped slaves from the northern British colonies that had agreed to accept the Roman Catholic religion in return for protection and freedom. The Black Militia, under the leadership of Francisco Menendez, helped defend the fort against British attacks and won the respect of the Spanish. In 1738, the Spanish governor granted the Africans their own land. For Rosen. Lies two miles north of St. Augustine and was the first free African settlement in what is now the United States. In 1741, the British captured Menendez and resold him into slavery. But... In 1752, I was able to come back to Fort Rosen as a free man. The love of freedom was shared by another group. The Seminole Indian. As a result of the northern British settlements, many Native American groups migrated to Florida. The Spanish had brought disease and war to the Native Americans of Florida. Almost all of the original cultures of Florida had disappeared. The very few that remained joined those that migrated from the north. Some of them had left Spanish missions rather than give up their own beliefs. The first Seminole War began in 1818. Then came the second in 1835. With each war, the Seminole population and land shrank. Many were forced to leave Florida and were displaced to reservations. By the end of the Third Seminole War in 1858, less than 200 Florida Seminoles remained. Those remaining few are the only tribe to carry on their culture and remain. Some say their name comes from the Spanish word Cimarrones, which means runaways. Many Native Americans, however, believe the name means free people. And so concludes Florida's early history. <laughs>